Okay. So today we <coughs> in this last class and uh, uh, we're going to uh, describe uh, um, fun functional extra functionalities. So not only solving, SMT uh, solving, but also functionalities like uh, uh, extraction of proofs uh, of a set calls uh, of interpolants. Plus, uh, I will hint something about all SMT and predicate abstraction and uh, SMT with the cost optimization. Uh, so what's called also uh, optimization model theories. Uh, and then I will just conclude. Okay, this is, this is going to be quite tight because uh, we have still uh, plenty of uh, uh, stuff to discuss. Um, I was uh, hoping to start yesterday with, with this class, but however, um, let's say half an hour late with respect to my schedule. Okay, so, <coughs> <coughs> so SMT is not a simply solving. SMT has also other, like with SAT, there are also related functionalities like uh, building proofs of unsatisfiability when a uh, formula is unsatisfiable, extract the unset of unsat the unset cores or the subset of clauses which cause the unsatisfiability when this is unsatisfiable, extract the uh, computer Craig interpolants, uh, we are going to define them, uh, do something called uh, all SMT and uh, another very pre important, uh, um, very important uh, uh, functionality, which is predicate abstraction, which we are going uh, to define. And then I will also briefly say something about uh, ext an extension to SMT to optimization. So optimization model theory of SMT with the cost functions. Okay, let's start with proofs and uh, sub cores, which are, as usual are strictly related. Okay, actually, uh, a resolution proof of, of, of um, so when we have a formula which is uh, unsatisfiable via um, in SMT, the, the way of extracting uh, um, a proof is very, very similar to the case of SAT. So we have, uh, in general, if we know that we can extract uh, a resolution proof of unsatisfiability for every running on unsat solving, okay? We do the same with SMT. So the resolution proof, we, we extract in the very same way uh, we did with, uh, with the, we do with the SAT, we extract a resolution proof of theory unsatisfiability. The only difference with respect to um, uh, with respect to uh, the case, the sub case is that uh, uh, the clauses, so the leaf clauses, are not only uh, original clauses but also theory lemmas. Okay, which means uh, either uh, uh, the theory lemmas which were uh, generated by, by the uh, theory solvers. So, for instance, um, both uh, when uh, in, when doing a theory conflict analysis or when uh, uh, doing a theory propagation. So, theory conflict and theory deduction clauses. Well, as in CDCL, we build uh, the resolution by backward traversal, like we did. So, we start from the first clause, we extract, uh, we get the resolution proof which caused the the, the first clause, then all of them were either key lemmas or original clauses or learned clauses, which again, or, or Boolean learned clauses, I mean, and again, we build uh, recursively, the, the stand for every learned clause stand with their own uh, um, resolution proofs until we get um, a resolution proof uh, whose leaves are either original clauses and theory lemmas. Okay, so this is the Boolean part of the proof. Then, of course, we have the theory lemmas, and we have, of course, uh, to prove in some way that the theory lemmas are, are theory lemmas, so are valid in the clause. Well, in some cases, those the father, some so since the theory lemmas are just uh, disjunctions, very often uh, uh, those are quite obviously um, uh, valid. But you may also want uh, to, to be the specific proofs uh, of for every theory, small proof for every theory lemma um, according to the theory. So you want to certify also that the theory lemmas are actually theory lemmas. So what you can do is, uh, for instance, uh, build for it. And there are 
theory specific techniques uh, for uh, uh, for uh, uh, pro building proofs uh, of uh, uh, of validity to some extent uh, of uh, um, uh, of uh, or unsatisfiability of uh, uh, theory lemmas. So. Well, okay, so for instance, if we have uh, this, uh, this formula here, so you notice that there are plenty Boolean atoms, uh, uh, arithmetical atoms uh, around, then you, you, from an SMP solver, you can return some, uh, some proof. Notice that uh, the leaves of those proofs are either original clauses, which we mark here in red, Okay, or theory lemmas in linear integer arithmetic. Well, quite simple ones actually. Well, for instance, this theory lemma says that x uh, cannot be zero or one contemporary, which is looks quite in intuitive. This says that y, if y is two, then uh, y um, is uh, uh, cannot be a strictism. Uh, if uh, y is two, then well, I think there is uh, uh, maybe this is either y is true or uh, oh yes, that uh, y sorry that y equal two and y smaller than zero are mutually incompatible. Okay, yes, or um, also also this if y. Is, okay, if y is two, then obviously it cannot be that y is uh, smaller than zero. Same with uh, y equal one. So you see that in this case, for instance, the theory lemmas are very, very simple. And of course, notice that this involves only part of the formula. For instance, the, the clauses in green here are not involved. So, well, but in general, you may want, so these are quite uh, simple, uh, simple clauses in this case, so you don't really need certifying that this is a theory lemma. But in general, you may have a complicated, more complicated uh, disjunctions. So what you can do is to build a proof uh, of non-strict LRA equalities. So you can write, for instance, uh, um, when you have a conjunction, um, a clause which is a disjunction of uh, uh, inequalities or linear real inequalities. So for every, theory we can build a uh, proof. Uh, for instance, one we have some examples of proof uh, are, are um, the proof from non-sweet linear real inequalities. So this is a framework uh, found by, uh, can, proposed by Ken McMillan. Uh, when we have a set of inequalities on linear real arithmetic or on, on the integers, we can uh, write them as all in the form when we have a clause, we negate it and try to prove the, that the, uh, the conjunction of the negation of literal is false, it is unsatisfiable, which means that the clause is, is valid, right? So once we have a, a conjunction of literals in this form, uh, at a given sum of, um, of, of uh, with the sum of variables greater or equal than, uh, than zero, well, we can substantially uh, weight, uh, apply some, uh, combining them by just adding a weight for them. So for instance, uh, if we uh, have this, uh, this expression here and this expression here, well, we can multiply both terms here uh, for one and this term here for, uh, for three, Okay, and uh, we, we sum the two term and we obtain that zero is more equal than four X one. Okay, so three X one plus three times X one minus three X two plus three X two, which is zero plus one. So we can find some coefficient to multiply the, the term on the, on the right of the, the greater or equal in such a way that you eliminate some variable. The same you can do here, right? Well, this is very, very similar to the techniques uh, that uh, uh, I think it was called the different techniques, different, um, 
of tool to solve systems uh, of uh, um, equations that you've learned uh, in, uh, in secondary school, right? So you multiply uh, some equalities for a fixed for uh, two fixed constants in such a way that you remove one term. Okay, that sum them you you remove one term. And here we have a similar situation here. If you take these two expressions here and you multiply them by uh, respecting the two and one, here you have uh, uh, two x3 minus uh, four x1 minus three. And so, sorry, two x3, because this has no x3 here. Uh, you have two x1 uh, minus zero x1, which is, um, Okay, sorry, I got it wrong. 2x3 minus 2x3 is 0x3. Uh, minus 2x1 multiplied by 2 makes uh, uh, minus 4x1. Okay, and this is uh, uh, minus 6 plus 1 makes minus 5. Okay, so you obtain these two inference. But then here we have 4x1 and 4x1 and you get at the end that you eliminate. So you see that in this case, you eliminate uh, x2. In this case, you, you eliminate x3, okay? You have to a proof with two terms, x1, you eliminate x1 here. And at the end of the day, so if you multiply both for one, you have that zero x1 minus five plus one minus four. So zero is more equal than minus four. At the end of the day, a proof is something which at the end of the day you have inferred an inequal, a wrong inequality, a false inequality, right? Because obviously zero is not smaller equal than minus four. Okay, so at the end you obtain this is a proof. This is the proof that this says this is inconsistent because summing them, making combination of them, you get to making some combination of those clauses, you can have a um, a false statement. Interesting, this is interesting because, uh, uh, for instance, you can uh, encode uh, any uh, the result of uh, an inconsistent tableau in the simplex procedure for an array in, uh, you can produce such kind of proof uh, from, for instance, um, the execution of a, of a simplex or other algorithms. Also, uh, remember that in the difference logic, you were um, a proof, an you had an inconsistent when you had a negative cycle. Well, this is quite straightforward to produce this uh, such such uh, um, such kind of proof uh, within with uh, a negative cycle because we just resolve uh, arcs two by two. Okay, so we, by the way, we'll see an example later on of this. So this means that substance, well, and you can build uh, resolute, uh, sorry, uh, proofs uh, for um, subco for um, uh, theory lemmas uh, arbitrarily in, in different, uh, in different uh, uh, theories. This is an example arithmetic, but there are equivalent. Uh, there are also uh, formats for other theories. Okay, so you can produce a proof from a SMT. And the, again, the, the idea of producing proof is, again, to decouple the Boolean part of, of the proof from the theory-specific part of the proof. You produce a resolution proof from the Boolean part, exactly like we did. So the sub solvent does, does it for us, okay? So in the way we have seen the last week. And then if you need, if you need it, we, you can produce some proof of validity, actually, you produce some proof of uh, unsatisfiability of the negation of the clause, which is the, the same, uh, by applying some frameworks, depending on, on the theory. We have seen an example for, for uh, linear arithmetic, but you can produce some for other, uh, for other theories. Um, okay. So, uh, well, for instance, in theory array, can uh, you you could find some deduction from 
from uh, instantiation of, uh, of the lemmas, which brings you to your theory lemma. Okay, similar to what we have seen in, uh, in uh, the example of theory of arrays. Uh, okay, strictly related. Um, guys, are there any questions? I think it's quite straightforward uh, extension of, uh, of SAT proofs uh, to SMT, right? Guys, are you hearing me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, no sorry. <laughs> I, I have a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's a little strange question. Uh, I know that for uh, propositional logic, uh, logic a resolution proof is complete. So if there is some uh, inconsistency, then we can only apply some resolution proof to find it. But uh, we are talking about the SMT, the Boolean <laughs> logic with uh, another, some other theories. How yeah. can we make sure that uh, resolution can all Always find, find the no, no, I mean, wait a moment. Once you have the theory lemmas, you can you have a resolution proof. Dot. The point is whether, if you remember, what how SMT work, SMT works substantially. Uh, if you remember the idea, the what how we explain uh, this idea of SMT uh, from the perspective of a SAT solver, like having a SAT solver which reasons on uh, uh, an original formula plus some clauses which are given to him uh, on demand by the theory solver, okay? This is actually the very same point, right? So SMT works with the SAT solvers which runs an original formula and, and then on demand add some new clauses. Okay, which are theory lemmas, right? Lemmas, so they are valid in the theory. And those lemmas are provided on demand by, um, by the theory solver. By the way, there are some authors who call the lazy SMT lemma on demand framework. I don't like in particular this definition, but that's some, somebody uses this, okay? So in a lazy SMT solver, you are guaranteed to have a resolution proof whose leaves are either original clauses and the theory lemma that the, the theory solvers have provided to you. And that's it. Okay? Then you may further want to certify that theory lemmas are actually theory lemmas. Okay? And then this is something which is theory specific. So you should have, for a given, uh, depending on the algorithm that you are using for implementing a theory, uh, the, the, solver, the theory solver, okay, you may have a way of producing some proof. Well, typically this is not an issue, a serious issue, because typically the theory lemmas are very small, okay? So and there are eye catching can be very easily verified to be, to be uh, valid actually typically you negate it and you can easily verify they are inconsistent okay but if you need uh, producing some proof explicit proof then for instance you can use uh, some um, deduction frameworks like this one i'm introducing this deduction framework uh, uh, here mostly because this is of interest also for uh, um, for interpolants we see that okay but the point is you are guaranteed the resolution returns you a resolution proof that is which contains original clauses and theory lemmas. And then a different story is proving that the theory lemmas are actually valid in the theory. Did I answer to your question? Yes, I see. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So unsat calls, uh, unsat calls uh, comes substantially nearly for free from uh, uh, the uh, both the the fact that you can produce resolution proofs in uh, in SMT and uh, from the extraction of unsat calls in uh, in SAT. Okay, so the problem is uh, given a usual uh, a theory satisfied a set of clauses, you can extract from from it. Uh, 
probably small, minimal, minimum the unsat uh, theory unsatisfiable sub subset, which is called the theory unsatisfiable cause. There is some, okay, surprisingly, there is a wide literature in SAT. There's very small uh, literature in SMT, okay? So we see, uh, well, this is quite, let's say, CBT4, now CBT4 is more maintained. Um, there are substantially three main approaches to do that. One is called proof-based approach. The other is assumption-based approach. And, uh, uh, and uh, there is the lemma lifting approach uh, we are going to explain. These two guys here are substantially straightforward distinctions of the proof-based approach and assumption-based approach in SAT. Uh, let me see. Well, this is quite obvious. So in SAT, the set of leaf closes. So in SAT, what was the proof approach to unsat correlation in SAT? Take the leaves in uh, in a resolution proof. Okay. In SMT, take the lift of the resolution proof and drop the theory lemmas from them because the theory lemmas are not original clauses, but however, they were theory valid. They are theory valid. Okay. So they not change the validity of the formula. Okay. That's quite obvious, right? Isn't it obvious? What are the, the subset of clauses or original clauses which cause the unsatisfiability? Well, take the, okay, let, let me show you in a, an example. So again, take the original formula. It, it was this example uh, of a few slides ago, okay? So why, so you have, what well, you were able to, to find that the set, the red, the, this formula was unsat by producing a resolution proof of unsatisfiability, okay, in such a way from starting from some original clauses marked in red here, plus some theory lemmas. So for instance, x equals one uh, uh, is incompatible with, uh, with x equals zero, well, unsurprisingly. Okay, or uh, y equal one is incompatible with the uh, y is more than zero. Again, so these all those blue guys here are the theory lemmas, and they are obviously valid. Okay, or if you prefer, their negation is obviously inconsistent. Okay, so since we are we were able to produce this proof, and since this is valid. Is this, this means that the, the set of red, the set of red uh, um, uh, clauses here are an unsat core. So you can produce the same uh, sat result by starting from from the only the this red subset. So you don't need the green clauses here. Okay. So obviously the red part here, so the, the leaves minus the, the, unsat, the, uh, the theory lemmas are an unsat core for the original formula. Is this clear? Guys? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes, 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 yes. I think this is quite straightforward, right? Similarly, uh, okay, so one easy way of extracting an asset core from uh, SMT is just to use, uh, you have it for free from the extraction of asset core from uh, the, from, uh, the uh, CCL uh, SAT solver. Now, uh, the assumption based approach, so there's also another approach, which is the assumption based approach, which is exactly identical to the assumption based approach we have mentioned in, uh, in SAT. Okay, so again, you label all the original clauses with a fresh Boolean atom, okay? Selector variables, remember the idea of selector variables in, uh, in SAT, okay? Okay, you, you check for, oh, of course, um, I forgot to say, an SMT, the, all what I said about uh, SAT, you can extend to SMT. So you can have SMT under assumptions, 
exactly. This depends only on the SAT solver, so you just uh, apply the SAT under assumption to the, the, the SAT solver inside the SMT device, okay? Same for incremental. You can have incremental SMT solving, which is again the same, the same uh, of incremental SAT solver plus remembering the theory lemmas. Okay, theory lemmas are valid. Okay, so you can safely remember them. Okay, so he, so same uh, same idea of uh, the assumption based approach in. Uh, in SMT, right? So you, you label every clause with the fresh Boolean atom selection variables, and then you run the, the formula uh, under the assumption of all the SI, SIs. And when your SAT, the SAT solver inside the SMT solvers returns a final conflict clause at decision level zero, remember, decision level zero is below, immediately below the assumption of uh, the, uh, the variables. Then all the clauses which were labeled by, by the selection variables, including the final, clause, final uh, uh, conflict clause, are the SAT call. Because are those which were had their role by conflict, ana conflict analysis tells you that those clauses are all and only the one who had their role in the resolution proof of unsatisfiability. Okay. Plus the theory lemmas, of course, but the theory lemmas are valid, so they are not part of the original form. Okay. So substantially, this is you have uh, like the case, uh, the previous case we had. You have is for free from uh, the the SAT correlation techniques from SAT. Okay. So here is an example again. If you have uh, well the same form as before. In red, you can label. Well, I wrote this as an implication, but you can write this uh, as a not SI uh, or okay. So, once uh, once uh, you run uh, uh, the formula over the SAT, the SMT solver over this uh, formula here, assuming all the SIs. Then uh, the conflict analysis, for instance, I, I tried this with the Yarix, and, uh, and uh, we return a, a subset of, the, a subset of uh, seven clauses. So the one uh, marked in red. From those, I can conclude that uh, those uh, uh, clauses had a role in the, uh, are the, the unsat core of the system. Notice that there is no is not necessarily only one such core. Okay, you may find that the different techniques may extract you different such core because may, the such core may be more than one. Okay, is this clear? Uh, just a question. Yeah. So, is there if uh, if there are multiple core, yeah. uh, multiple cores? Uh, is there um, an algorithm to find the, the smallest one? Yeah, yeah. What you can do is, yeah, okay. Uh, both in SAT and SMT, you can uh, simply go ahead. Okay. So mm -hmm. you, um, okay, you have extracted an, an asset core and then look for another one. You drop the, the one you are considering. So you add uh, this close. Uh, you add this close to the formula. So that you will never generate again this clause and rerun the algorithm. Okay. Simply. Okay. So there are techniques uh, we put for uh, smart enumerating uh, 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 all unsat calls. Okay. Again, I can point you to the literal to most work was has been done uh, in uh, in uh, the group of. Uh, um, uh, Marcus Silva in in Lisbon, but however, yes. So the the, the basic idea here is just once you have this, uh, you can just uh, add this clause uh, to the uh, to the current format and restart again. Okay, so you you will look for another you will look for another answer core. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay.
So the, here is a technique instead, which uh, um, uh, we conceived a few years ago. And um, uh, the good news is that, okay, since, uh, uh, so ANSAT core are very important in, uh, in many applications, particularly in formal verification. So in SAT, they have been developed many very strong, and very efficient uh, techniques, uh, which were substantial improvements of the, the one that we have seen uh, in uh, in uh, the uh, in the class uh, last weeks last week and um, so uh, we had this idea of exploiting uh, the best sub, uh, extractor sub, uh, boolean extractor uh, a sub core boolean extractor in uh, on the field uh, just for free so here is a technique which you call the lemma lifting, uh, um, by which uh, you can uh, uh, use an external uh, uh, Boolean asset core extractor, so the best you have on the market. And this works uh, is very, very simple idea, which works as follows. So uh, you just have to remember that uh, two facts. So that the theory lemmas that you learn, that you use during the search are all valid in T. So they have no, so the fact that adding or dropping them has no role, uh, does not change the, the uh, mix uh, dropping and adding theory lemmas uh, is, um, is a, a validity preserving the transformation. So it does not change the, the formula, the semantics of the formula. So, and also, Remember, so if during the search, so when you run an SMT solver and uh, during the search, uh, the, uh, the SMT solver produces at least the one decay of uh, theory lemmas, okay? Then the consequence is that the Boolean abstraction of uh, the original formula plus the list of theory lemmas is proposition inconsistent, okay? because this is exactly the reason why the sub solver stops. Because after you have added too many, enough theory lemmas to the resolution proof, the theory, the, um, the SMT solver is able to entail faults. Are we there? Is this clear? Yes. yes. If the one decay are all the theory lemmas that uh, uh, the SMT solver pr has produced when uh, reasoning, uh, when finding unsatisfiability, then uh, the, the Boolean abstraction of phi plus the theory lemmas is unsatisfiable in a, in the Boolean case. Okay. And the reason is that exactly the, the, uh, the SAT solver of the SMT solver has produced a resolution proof of false of those of part of the original clauses plus those theorems. Okay. Okay, now we can exploit this fact and do the following. So suppose we run, we take the original set of original clauses, let's call them C1, Cn, and feed them to the LAZ SMT solver. Well, if it is a, this will return a SAT and SAT. Well, if they return SAT, we, are, we cannot start an SAT core, of course. But if uh, this returns SAT, uh, unsat, okay, suppose that we have collected, we have stored somewhere all the theory lemmas, the one decay, which the SMT solver has used to, um, to check the unsatisfiability during the search to, in order to check the unsatisfiability of the whole formula, okay? Okay, then we conjoin them with we conjoin them with the, the original formula and compute its Boolean abstraction, which is inconsistent by, by this fact. Okay. So and we can feed by to the best possible uh, uh, unsat core extractor and uh, Boolean unsat core extractor, which re will return. A subset of uh, of the original clauses plus a subset of the C lemmas. 
So he has done a lot of uh, work, so he is the best uh, asset co Buna asset co extractor in the world, and it returns uh, the, a subset of the clauses and of the lemma, of, of the theory lemmas, okay? But then, okay, we can map back those clauses into, into original, a subset of the original set of formulas and a subset of the, of, the, of the theory lemmas, okay? But the theory lemmas we can throw away because they're all valid clauses. So the conjoining them with the formula does not change the formula. So what we have by throwing away the, uh, throwing the trash, the, um, the, the, the lemma returned is a theory and set core of the original formula. What, what is the advantage of doing that is that we can exploit the best, uh, we, we have it for free, we can exploit for free the best uh, uh, Boolean set core extracting technologies which are off the shelf, okay? Is this clear? Yes. Okay. As a comment, uh, this was one of my the my easiest papers in in my career. Uh, was sort of Columbus egg <laughs> to some extent, but however, this was very very simple idea, but it worked very well. Okay, so well again, so if you have a form in the same form as before, so the asymptotic solver generates the following set of theory lemmas. Okay, remember that uh, one is incompatible with zero, uh, that uh, y is equal to two is incompatible with, with the y and the smaller than zero, and that y equal one is incompatible with y smaller than zero. Okay, then we, you pass the following formula to the external Boolean constructor, so this, the original uh, form, so you label, well, you, well, you label those lemmas with, with those atoms with B0, B1, and blah, blah, blah. Well, this is an, uh, an inconsistent formula, and the unset core can extract the, the subset in red. The subset in red is, uh, uh, from which we can throw away the theory lemmas, okay? So notice that those guys here are theory lemmas, okay? So these say exactly uh, those three theory lemmas. Well, the red one is the set core returned by the sub solver, and, but these are theory lemmas we can throw away and we have this unset core here. So one, two, three, four, five, six clauses, which you can easily check that is indeed an asset core. Okay. So what is the advantage of doing this that you exploit for free off the shelf uh, the best uh, technologies for asset core extraction that, uh, from the shelf. Okay. Clear to everybody? If so, we can pass to something. Uh, yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, so uh, basically, in this case, you are uh, so the lifting part is converting uh, this to. Sorry, I Sagar, converting these sorry, things can you into Boolean. Uh, Saga, sorry. <laughs> so hello. Well, can yeah. you uh, so slowly and uh, and uh, maybe set up a little the mic because uh, I uh, I was very disturbed. I couldn't hear you. Uh, okay, is it better now? Uh, sorry, I... Yeah, now, now, yes, I understand. Now I hear Okay. You. So I just want to know what, what happens in, gen, in general. Like, so because I, when even for understanding the unsat core in this case, to do the, for, for, for going from the first one to second one, you still need to call the theory solver, right? No, no, no. The, the theory solver is, is, no, no, no. The SAT solver, the SMT solvers, finds that this formula is unsatisfiable in SMT, okay? Okay. And in doing that, it tells, look, in order to prove the unsatisfiability of this formula, I have uh, built the following, I, I had to use uh, the following three, three lemmas. 
Okay. okay. Notice that this is yeah. exactly the is exactly this case here, right? Remember? I'll okay. Those yes, yes, yes. Three lemmas here. They are exactly the same problem. I just show I use the same problem and show you the, the three different methods. Okay. I've so the I told so you say Matsat. You can tell uh, the, there is an option in Matsat, uh, which we introduced when we thought of this idea, uh, which can, uh, you can ask Matsat to return you the set of, uh, um, of theory lemmas uh, he, he has produced in order to prove the, uh, the satisfiability of the formula. Okay? Okay. So this means substantial that in, in, uh, in three branches, he will have found that uh, uh, x equal one and x equal to zero belonged to the same branch. Okay, which is of course inconsistent. Okay. Okay. So in doing okay. that, he will say he will produce a a, a, a conflict set x equal one and x equal to zero, and uh, so that he he learned the clause not x equal one uh, or not x equals zero okay right 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 and then using conflict analysis uh, to to build that notice that these two atoms here occur for instance here here or here okay okay perfect here 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 so you have to rest so boolean from the boolean perspective we will have to resolve against those instances here okay are we there right. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. So yes, you have yes. produced that and then stop. And this is uh, from now on, uh, everything is handled at, uh, at the purely Boolean level. Okay. Perfect. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Let's speak about interpolants. Okay, so what is a cra um, we have seen what a creating interpolant is. We see now what is uh, uh, for for SMT. Uh, notice that we are speaking here only with uh, assuming formula which are quantifier free. There are more general definitions uh, involving uh, formula which are not quantifier free, but uh, this is something more complicated, and we uh, this exceeds uh, the the scope of our course. So again, given a, an order pair of uh, form, SMT form in some theory T or combination of theories T, such that A and B entail false, so which are mutually inconsistent. As before, the definition does not say that uh, A and B must be singularly consistent, but the only practical application of the notion of interval is when, uh, when uh, singularly they are consistent because of course if one is inconsistent then obviously this decades into trivial uh, it's a non-informative uh, situation right so <laughs> a craig interpolant is a formula l a i sorry uh, such that a entails in the theory i in the theory okay i and b are inconsistent in the theory and uh, the all uninterpreted symbols occurring in uh, uh, in A, so the uninterpreted fun, uh, all uninterpreted uh, symbols occurring in A are common uh, to A and B. Okay, okay. So substantially means uninterpreted means the variables. Okay, mean boolean atoms uh, and variables. Okay, or, or apart from, or uh, if you have uh, an interpreted function symbols, also an interpreted function symbols. But in, apart from a UF, uh, here an interpreted, an interpreted symbols are substantially variables and Boolean atoms. Okay, so substantially, <clears throat> okay, let's uh, consider the, um, so from I know implicit, we mean that there are variables, okay? Okay, so substantially, again, here interpolants has uh, the very same role as uh, in SAT. We need a sort of intermediate, so if, uh, since A and B entail false, meaning 
A entails uh, uh, not B, okay? So you need a sort of uh, projection of A over the common symbols between A and B, such that I and B are false, and I is in some way derived from A. From a. Substantially, I represent the, the part of A which is relevant for making, uh, uh, for causing the inconsistency of B. Or written in another way, I is, sets the, the necessary constraints on the common variable to rule out all the possible models of B. Okay? This is very conceptually very similar to the notion of interpolance in Boolean in uh, proposition logic, but this is this extended to that notion. Uh, sorry, yeah? uh, did you say model or counter models for B? No, to rule out. Okay. To rule out all the models. So okay. substantially, you know what I'm saying here is that the I contain cioè, substantially makes false all uh, the candidate is so is the part of uh, a which is necessary to make false all the possible models of b yeah 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 that's right okay so this is the meaning of rule out okay okay <laughs> not in, uh, cutting out they, they didn't know thank you okay sorry uh, if it wasn't clear okay so this is very important, in particular in software verification. In, in, um, it's very, very important in software verification. And uh, there are some works uh, for various theories. So the point is that very, we have to develop techniques for theory specific and also for theory combination. The idea behind that is a generalization of the algorithm that uh, we show at uh, last week. Actually, if you remember, I told you, okay, this algorithm, and there is a step two, way, which is uh, uh, unrelevant, so which is uh, empty when you are dealing with pure SAT. You have to do something here if we are dealing with uh, more uh, expressive logic than SAT. So the idea is, uh, generate a resolution proof of theory and satisfiability of A and B. But that's exactly what we already have, right? So the SAT solver inside the SMT solver produces by, its, by itself, can produce if we track it, uh, a resolution proof of satisfiability where the leaves, where the, the root is false, of course, and the leaves are either original clauses or theory lemmas, okay? If you remember, well, in, uh, we had this algorithm, then we generalize it by adding one important step, which is the following. So how we can do deal with the theory lemmas? Well, remember that theory lemmas are valid, okay? So this means that their negation, their negation is inconsistent. Okay. Okay there. So if a lemma is yeah. in the form, is the negation of uh, some theory conflict set eta. So remember that at any theory lemmas comes from SMT as the negation of uh, one uh, um, conflict set eta returned by the theory solver, okay? Well, eta is a, an inconsistent set of Boolean, Boolean literals, okay? But then, okay, thus this every eta has some atoms which occur in B and some other atom which do not occur in B. Okay. 
So you can think of eta as the conjunction of two pieces, a set of atoms which occur in B, and so from B, and the set of atoms which do not occur in B. So this means that we can compute an interpolant, so, and this conjunction of two, two formula, okay, so we call respectively eta uh, slash b and eta projected b, where eta slash b is the set of literal whose atoms do not occur in b, and eta projected to b is the set of atoms which produce, uh, which uh, belong to b, okay? So you can think every theorem lemma as as a conjunction A and B, right? So one one coming, uh, the, the second is atoms of the original B and, and the other part, okay? This is an inconsistent part. So you can produce uh, in that theory an interpolant for that conjunction of literals, for these two conjunctions of literals, okay? This is the theory specific part, okay? And then after that, you apply simply the, alg the algorithm that we have seen, right? So for every original leaf clause, we uh, consider the, we compute the projection of P if C belongs to A. Otherwise we, we map into a false if C belongs to C. Okay, so substantially, we substitute for every theory lemma, we substitute an interpolant, well, the negation of the interpolant, of course, because this is a valid, the negation of an interpolant of the, of, for the uh, conflict set, okay? And for all, everything else, we, we use the, the, the algorithm that, that we have seen last time, right? So remember, for every original leaf clause, we, uh, if uh, the, the clause belongs uh, to B, when we substitute it with true, okay? Otherwise, we take its projection to B. So we take the atoms which belong to, to B, okay? And then once we have produced the partial interpolants on the leaf, we progressively go through the proof, uh, the resolution proof by doing the following. So for every inner node of the resolution, uh, well, this was obtained by resolution, so this means that there is, uh, it was a step like uh, P or phi one and uh, against not P or phi two, where P was uh, some atom. And then we see if P uh, does not occur in B, we do the, we add the disjunction of interpolants. If, if P belongs to B, we do, we add the conjunction of interpolants. Okay, and at the end, the, the interpolant of, of the original false formula is an interpolant for A and B. Of course, the proof of this was due to, to Pudlak uh, uh, long ago. Uh, the intuition is that you take, uh, you every step uh, you want to consider only the rel, the part of A, which is relevant, who can have a role in falsifying B. Okay, so, you you, so in particular, you start from an interpolant of the negation of uh, uh, the body clause in, in, um, in phi. Okay, so let's see an example. Again, uh, uh, okay, this, we have this uh, simple formula here. Um, in red, we have uh, uh, atoms which occur in B. In uh, blue, we have atom which occur only in A. Okay, notice that in A, we also have B1 and B2, which belong, uh, which occur in, uh, in, uh, uh, in B as well, right? And you have some shared variables here, which are x1, uh, x2. So x1, x2 is uh, uh, 
sorry, x1 is, um, is shared, x2 is specific for A, and x3 is um, specific for uh, B. Okay. Notice they, there is something that we haven't seen yet, okay? So there is, the, we need a specific interpolant procedure for the conjunctive fragment of the theory. So again, like we have done substantially in every operation, we have partitioned the problem into dealing with the Boolean part and dealing with the theory specific but Boolean free part. So the conjunctive fragment of, uh, so we have, remember, SMT combines two features, the capability of, of dealing with the Boolean reasoning and the capability to deal with the theory specific reasoning without Boolean reasoning, okay? That is on conjunctions of literals, so no Boolean operators, okay? Similarly, we have uh, partitioned this, uh, the problem of complete interpolants for uh, OMT, for uh, SMT, with the general algorithm we deal with the Boolean part, plus some uh, theory, theory specific interpolation technique specific to deal with the conjunctions of literal in a given theory without any Boolean operator. Okay, again, decouple the Boolean part from the, from the pure theory specific part. Okay, so, okay, let me Suppose that we, by magic, we have a way of computing interpolant for conjunctive, conjunctive subset of uh, literals. Okay, so suppose we have these two formula here. We okay, we have a resolution proof uh, of of uh, this. Some uh, problems are uh, are formulas. Some others are some others are theory. Some are from the original formula, some others are uh, theory lemmas, okay? Um, okay, we have uh, this uh, theory lemma here, okay? So this is a, a theory lemma, okay? So you can say that uh, uh, these four things conjoined is valid. So you can negate them and check that this is, uh, um, this is inconsistent. Well, unsurprisingly, this is exactly this case here. Okay, this is exactly those four literals here, which we have proved to be inconsistent in this proof here. Okay, so this is exactly this set of lemmas. The the negation of this conjunction of uh, inconsistent sets. Okay, so this is a theory lemma. Okay, so trust me for a while, we'll see in the next slide that this is an interpolant for this lemma. So this has a, uh, a B specific part, so those atoms belong to uh, B. Okay, these are not those which belong to B, so this belongs only to A, okay? Notice that they have in common only one theory variable, which is X1. Now, trust me, for a while, you'll see in the next slide, then this is the, um, this is the interpolant for uh, the, uh, for the, um, uh, for this uh, set, okay? Now, okay, let's apply the, the algorithm. Well, this is B, this is a format, all those atoms occur in B, so this substitute will be true, remember? So, uh, we, this was uh, uh, obtained by resolving on, uh, uh, on this atom here, which is on B, okay? So this means that we apply the, the conjunction. So substantially, we apply the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the conjunction of the two, which is true with this. So we, we, we just uh, 
bring uh, this. Uh, so we, we just map this to this because we have the conjunction with true. Okay. Similarly, here this was obtained by a resolution of an atom in B. Okay. So we have the conjunction of the interpolants, but the, here the interpolant is true because this is completely in B. So this we have uh, uh, this is uh, just the conjunction. So we just move uh, this object here. Now, uh, this is a little more complicated uh, because uh, this is uh, resolved on this atom here. Okay, so this is part of uh, A instead. Okay, so we just, uh, um, okay, so we bring in only the part belonging to B, remember? So this is just B1. So we compute the projection. Point three here, right? Okay. Now we had, uh, in order to get it from here to here, we were resolving this atom against this one. Okay. This is not in B, so we have to apply the disjunction of the two interpolants. So we have to apply the disjunction with well, this interpolant with this interpolant here, and which is B one or zero is more equal than four x1 plus one. Okay, so we have the disjunction of these two elements. Again, here, this is completely in B, so which is true. Uh, we have uh, resolved on an atom on B, so we have the conjunction of the two interpolants. Okay, conjunction with true, we just move this down. Here, um, blah, blah. We had uh, this uh, uh, this atom here, which has uh, um, uh, um, an A component and the B component here. Okay, so we project only the uh, B component. So this is just B two. Okay. Then, uh, uh, in order to compute this, we we did a resolution on B two, so an atom in B. So this means that we have to take uh, the uh, conjunction of these two interpolants here. And indeed, we have the conjunction of, with, of this with this. Okay. Now, last point, uh, this is uh, uh, completely in A. Okay. So this is the projection of this is false. It's an empty clause, which is false. Okay. Here, so uh, this was resolved on an atom which was on A. Okay, so we have to take the conjunction of the two interpolants. But the conjunction with false means the this only this I move this element, and this is the final interpolant. Okay. Notice something interesting that. Uh, okay, so there is a, a piece missing here. How did we obtain the interpolant of this clause here? Okay. Well, again, there are techniques to extract interpolants from proofs. Substantially, when you have a proof of a conjunction of a conjunction literal of a two conjunction of literals, uh, you consider only the the idea substantially substituting the set of literals coming from B with true because, of course, they had no role. And take the part of uh, uh, A which may have caused, which may have interacted with B. Okay, so the the te the technique works as follows: take the proof. So this was again uh, um, defined by Macmillan. Uh, for instance, for linear arithmetic, you can always from a proof like the one we have seen you can always mimic that proof with the same coefficients by just substituting the B nodes with uh, true. Notice that true is zero, is more or equal than zero, is equivalent to true, right? Because this is obviously true. This is an inequality. Okay, and with the same coefficient, so we substitute all the B elements with zero here. So here, for instance, you start from uh, conjoining these two guys and you obtain zero is more equal than four X one. Here you have uh, 
you substitute this come from B, so you substitute with zero. Uh, so with true, right? Zero is more equal than zero. That, of course, combining gives again zero is more equal than zero. Uh, if you sum this with coefficient one, you obtain zero is more equal than four one, which is exactly our interpolant. Okay. So intuitively, substantially, we ignore the, we take the part of A, which had a role in combining, which had a role in combining with B to produce false. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay, there is another way we can do. Uh, if we had, for instance, if we have a set of differences, we can write a set of differences in this form here, right? And we can apply the resolution, uh, uh, the resolution step. Uh, I don't have the original ones here. Uh, okay, so consider those here. Those. Uh, con uh, three constraints here, okay? And uh, two red uh, constraints here. They represent uh, a cycle, a negative cycle. So they are mutually consistency because they represent a negative cycle here. Okay? So the, the blue ones are the A and the B, uh, the red one are the Bs, okay? So what, so you can build a resolution proof uh, of falsity by, uh, applying the very same uh, uh, technique we have seen so far. Of course, that time we use always a coefficient one because, uh, uh, of course, every variable occurs only with coefficient one. Okay, we have a similar resolution proof, but now we can substitute those two guys here as true. And then we apply the combination. At the end, we had a, we had a, this, which is an interpolant, okay? Um, okay, so, but notice that uh, uh, we can do better than this by just noticing that these are part of a graph. So this is the algorithm that we would apply. So is this atom, is algorithm here applied to the specific case where we have different differences? Okay, so take this algorithm here and apply it to this. We had an interpolant. Yes, this is an interpolant. Okay, but notice that this uh, is an algorithm from general linear real arithmetic to general linear real arithmetic. So if applied to some difference, the output is not guaranteed to be a difference. Okay, so in fact, you see that this involves also four variables. Instead, we can produce, uh, this was again uh, one very easy observation that we had uh, long ago. We can produce a graph based version of the interval, but just notice that the conjunction of the charts of the graph, of the A graph, is an interpolant. So if you have a uh, um, if you have an, uh, um, a negative cycle, so remember that a set of inconsistency in, uh, in differences can, can always be seen by, as a, a, a negative graph, a negative cycle. Well, we take the charts of the of sequences of continuous A variables. Okay? Notice that this is a chord, right? So we substantial, we can also take the charts of uh, the, so, and the charts, the conjunction of the charts of the A variables is an interpolant. Why is this an interpolant? Well, the charts, of course, you take the sum in the chart and you take the sum of the two, of, of the uh, arts we, you are cutting, okay? So why this is an interpolant? Well, the sum of the charts are still a cycle, 
Yes. They are still a negative cycle. Yes, of course, because the sum of the, since uh, every charge takes the sum of the elements, okay? So the global sum is, the, is still the same, okay? So it's still an, so A and I, so sorry, B and I are still inconsistent. So the interpolant plus the red parts are still inconsistent. Well, of course, the I is entailed by A. The interpolant, well, of course, it's a charge, right? Uh, if uh, x1 minus x2 is uh, smaller equal than one and x2 minus x3 is smaller equal than zero, then x1 minus x3 is more equal than zero. Okay? It's just transitivity of uh, smaller equal or the operation smaller or equal. Okay? So the interpolant is implied by A. Okay? And there is interpolant. It's built only, only on the shared variable. Yes, because it considers only, the charts consider only the variables of intersection with the red arts. So this variable here, this variable here, this variable here, this variable here. Okay. So at the end of the day, we have an interpolant, which is the conjunction of x1 minus x3 plus one and x4 minus x5 minus one. Notice that if, if we conjoin these two, two elements here, we have exactly this interpolant here. If we merge, if we, sorry, conjoin, if we sum from this interpolant, we can derive this interpolant here, right? We just sum, make a sum of this. Okay. But this is an interpolant which is still in the L, still in difference logic. Okay. Are we there? Oh, uh, I will, uh, oh, I mean, I'm a little late. Um, I just mention very quickly that there is uh, uh, an interesting application, which is also all sat. So all sat is another field of uh, some interest in which you enumerate all possible solutions of a formula, all possible models, or actually you, you list a set of partial models partial truth assignment such that all its extensions are all and only the models of the formula. Okay. So substantially what you do, is, there are many techniques to do that, but this is one simple way of doing that is just whenever you have found a partial assignment, uh, you negate it. Uh, you try to minimize it as possible. You, mean, you negate it and you add it as a, as a close to your formula. In this way, you, can, you are sure that you are not uh, generating it again. We have the same OLSMT. So we will, OLSMT is often a, a technique to enumerate all the theory satisfied by truth assignments, proposition satisfying phi. Okay. Now, there exists an important subcase of, of OLSMT, which is the we call projected all SMT or uh, all SMT over important subset of atoms. So suppose we have only, you have a, a set of atoms which you consider relevant and some other atom you, you, cons you consider less relevant, okay? So you want uh, to enumerate all assignment over the relevant set of atoms, which can be extended to theory satisfying and truth assignment proposition satisfying phi. Okay, so this is very important in, in the formal methods as a predicate abstraction. And why is this the case? Right. So suppose uh, you are verifying a piece of software, okay? And there are some, so generating a, a verification piece of software, we have uh, several atoms. Some are conditions, for instance. If X is smaller than five, then uh, go left, otherwise uh, you go right. 
or while x is uh, greater than zero, do this, okay? And then other atoms are, so x, uh, x1 uh, uh, equal x0 plus 3 or whatever, okay? So we have, so suppose you want to compute, check whether, <laughs> so the coverage of an algorithm, for instance. So you want to analyze the correctness for at least one possible branch. But the branches typically are decided by a subset of atoms. Conditions, condition of ethanesis, conditions of uh, loops, so while, and, uh, and so on, okay? So there are a set of atoms which are more important than others. So you want to find a coverage. So you want to enumerate the truth assignment at least for every branch, so at least for every possible values of the conditions, okay? So we want to check that every, every branch has, has a, a solution, so as at least one occurrence, okay? This is done typically as a predicate abstraction or which is implemented as a, um, a, a side, a projected OLSMAT. And this works as follows. So suppose that phi is an SMT formula over uh, some domain of variables, uh, Vj. And uh, suppose that uh, uh, gamma i is a set of relevant predicates over V, okay, in your formula, okay? Then you compute the predicate abstraction is the, the formula obtained by existentially quantifying the way the variable v over the formula phi and big end of pi if and only if delta i of v. So this is okay. This means so what is this is a, a, a purely Boolean formula over the, the Boolean atom pi, each labeling the relevant atoms, and you want to find. The set, so this formula is a disjunction of the set of partial assignments over the variable, or the truth assignment over the variable P, such that phi and phi and the big end of phi i, if you know, not is satisfiable. So substantially, you want to see which are the combination of the value of the, of the predicate gamma, notice that the pi are just names for the predicate gammas, okay? Such that if you assign the value of, a, a, notice that here, if you assign the pi to true, then this means also by this assigning gamma i to true and vice versa, okay? Such that this assignment to this value of gamma is consistent with phi. I want you want to try to see all this combination of truth assignments to the pi to the gamma i and just and then for the pi which are consistent with the formula phi okay for instance if your formula comes out from the nasio software and the, the pis are the, all the conditions in the while and if the if then else, you want to uh, see what are the, the branch which have actual, actually one, at least one execution possible, possible execution, valid execution, okay? So substantially you want, uh, well, I, I know this is, may sound uh, a little complicated, but look at this definition. So ignore this for a while. Look at this definition here. If the set of possible combination of truth assignment to the variable P's and hence the variable gamma, the atoms gamma, okay, which are compatible with phi. Let me show an example. So substantially you want to see, okay, what are the possible value combinations of, uh, of the gamma predicate, which uh, are compatible with phi, with the original formula. 
Okay, consider this example. And notice that in general, the predicate may not be part explicitly of the formula. So for instance, suppose the formula phi, phi is, let's make a very trivial example. Suppose the phi is simply one plus two is strictly greater than 12, okay? And you have that the predicate one plus two is equals two and one minus two is smaller than 10, okay? So if you compute the predicate abstraction between, so we you introduce two Boolean atoms, P1 and P2, labeling respectively these two predicates here, okay? So what you do here, you enumerate all possible combinations of P1 and P2. What can you do? Okay, so is uh, uh, P1 and, uh, uh, so if I assume, so, so if I try P1 and P2, both true, so I have 1 plus 2 is strictly smaller than 12, but 1 plus 2 is equal to 2. So you notice immediately that P1 cannot, is not compatible with this atom. P1 is 2 is not compatible with this, because assigning P1 to true will make this true, which is incompatible with this. Okay? So we see that all the possible combinations which are consistent are not P1 and not P2 and not P1 or P2, which can be further simplified with not P1 into not P1. Okay? How is this done? Well, substantially, the very basic idea here, I just to give you the flavor, is that we, I uh, don't know where, if I have a slide about that, no. But substantially, you find the truth assignment for this, okay? Um, once you have found a satisfying truth assignment, which will say, for instance, not P1 and not P2, and uh, this is uh, false, and this is true, so and this is false, and this is true, then takes its projection. Take only the project P1, uh, uh, so not P1 and not P2, and learn it as a clause. So learn P1 or P2. After that, you will never repeat again P1, uh, not P1 and not P2. And we'll find a new assignment, not P1 and uh, uh, P2, and uh, this guy is false, and this, this guy is true, and this guy is true. Then we will project it. So you have not P1 or P2. You learn the clause P1 or not P2. And then after you have learned those two clauses, you find, look, this is unsatisfiable. Okay, so you have enumerated these two, these two assignments. Okay. This is, again, uh, I can uh, point you, if you are interested on the topic, I can point you to some uh, uh, paper, which I seem, I seem I forgot to add here. Oh, uh, no, okay. This, I, I will suggest you to take a look at this paper if you are, if you are interested in, in this topic. Okay, uh, I, what time is it? 2.35, 2 well, I only very, uh, less than half an hour to take the, the very last, uh, topic, which is optimization model theories. I'm, I'm, well, I'm very, uh, okay. So the point here is that this topic, this is a topic which will uh, require a course in its own, right? So I gave a call, I gave a course on optimization model theories at the EGK, International Joint Conference on Artificial Intelligence, and it took a whole morning to, to give it. So it will take at least, uh, let's say, six or eight hours to give a, a complete survey on that. But I just try to give you the flavor of that. So what's the problem is, in general, okay, let me go through uh, a general problem here. Uh, optimization model theory is a problem uh, where you have a formula which contains at least uh, on some theory. Well, the key point of such theory, for instance, the linear arithmetic, 
is that some theory should contain a notion of greater of e greater and e than equal. Okay. So that theory should have a greater equal notion. Okay. So it should admit the notion of a total order between uh, uh, the elements of the theory. Okay. For instance, linear arithmetic. For instance, bit vectors. For instance, floating point. Okay. Uh, so the idea is uh, not only to find a uh, so and uh, you give a term in that theory, which we generally can think as a cost. Okay. And uh, so the what you want to do is to find not only a solution, well, not only to check whether this form is satisfied or not. Okay. But also that you want to find a, the, so if satisfied, but you want to find a model which, is, which makes the, the, the term cost minimum. Okay? So this is a combination of SMT and optimization. So not only you want a model, or saying there is no model, but if there is a model, you want a model which is minimum according to this cost function, which is the, a generic term in the formula. Okay. You may also have some extra information, like having uh, an upper lower bound uh, to uh, to the value if you have this information. Okay. So this is the generic term. We have many sub cases. Um, okay, first of all, so the idea is, well, let's see, see first for linear real arithmetic. I, I'm saying, I'm just giving the flavor. If you are interested, I can you point to some uh, work. So every time every assignment is fine. Uh, so the idea is what as follows, right? So you should suppose that you have uh, uh, inside the SMT solver, you have a linear programming optimization, which is able to find the minimum value of conjunction of elements, for instance, linear arithmetic, okay? So every time, every assignment, a truth assignment, so think how SMT solver works, right? Well, once uh, every linear, each assignment is found uh, satisfiable in linear arithmetic, you invoke uh, an optimizer over, over new, for instance, linear programming. Well, in SMT, you have this for free because remember that the simplex is uh, an optimization algorithm uh, even before being a solving algorithm. So substantially, just uh, you have a tiny modification to the uh, linear arithmetic theory solver, which says when, when you find a solution, don't stop, but go ahead until you find an optimal solution, okay? So once you have found a minimum mean, what you do is that you not only proceed, with, so instead of stopping, you learn the close cost strictly smaller than mean, and then you proceed the search. Since you have added this cost, this unit, this will be immediately unipropagated. So will uh, this uh, atom here will be part of, of every future truth assignment, okay? Because this is learned as a unit clause, it will be unipropagated at level zero, okay? So this will be immediately, will be part of every future unit clauses, every future truth assignment. This means that no, from now on, all the truth assignment will, will uh, be enumerated, will have a solution, with the cost strictly smaller than mean. So substantially by doing that, we have restricted the, the search of our uh, device to truth assignment whose cost are strictly smaller than mean. Okay. The search, uh, it proceeds uh, by every time adding a new lower bound here, upper bound, until you return on SAT, until the last uh, constraint that you have added has no better solution. So the last minimum value that you have uh, found is the minimum, your current, your, your best solution. Okay? So there are many variations of that. Uh, 
this can be combined also with binary search. So once you can also not only put an upper bound, but also try to put an, uh, to guess a lower bound for instance in between the current. Uh, so let's uh, force uh, x uh, to be strictly smaller than uh, this given value. If you fail, then uh, you know that uh, uh, you cannot have a solution better than this value, and the go uh, you have restricted the, the range. So there are many, many uh, different uh, techniques. Let me just uh, explain uh, the latter uh, technique that I have shown you. So suppose you have this very simple uh, uh, example here. So where you have uh, these four clauses here, each involving one uh, uh, hyperplane here, and uh, the color correspond to the coron lines, okay? So the solution is, uh, and the cost, uh, the cost function is x. So you want to find the value of minimum, x, which makes x minimum, okay? Well, all the constraints are designed in such a way that uh, uh, the positive part is on the right of, uh, of, the line, of the lines that are drawn here, right? So let's start uh, with the search. So initially, suppose uh, you assign uh, not a one and a two, which means that uh, uh, you make true the, the pink and the green constraint, okay? So this means that you restrict this to this solution here, the solution space here. Your current root assignment is not a one, uh, x uh, plus y is strictly greater or equal than three, which is this pink line here. And uh, for x minus y is greater or equal than minus four, which is this green line here. So if you invoke the theory solver, this would say, yes, this is satisfiable, right? Because this is the space of a solution. And also if you invoke a minimizer, linear constraint minimizer between these two constraints here, it will tell you this value here, okay? The minimum X, which is this point here, which is a Z minus 0 0.2. So you learn, you add the constraints, cost is pretty smaller than minus 0 0.2. But once you add this, then, this this cuts this this solution space here right this is this low however of course the previous two solutions are no more possible right are incompatible because this was zero to two was the minimum possible solution of these constraints obviously if you impose that cost this is more than zero to two this truth assignment is no more a valid assignment right so you have to find you this force the SMT solver to find another assignment Suppose is not a one, not a two, which is, which triggers the, the pink and the blue. Uh, so the pink line is still act active, but this is now the, the blue line is the constraint. Well, combined with this constraint here, this allows this space of possible solutions, this triangle here, right? But this triangle has a minimum. So this is simply so the theory solver will say, yes, so this satisfiable and then the minimizer will tell you okay this is a solution okay the cost equals minus one so you add a constraint cost that is smaller than minus one which is this green area here but then the the previous truth assignment is no more compatible with this assignment so uh, you, this triggers another assignment, a one and not a two, which ability, uh, activates the red and the blue constraint. Okay, the blue constraint is here, the red constraint is here. Again, this is solvable, yes, because there's this space of solution here. What is the minimum? The minimum is minus two in this point here. Okay, so you further add the constraints, cost strictly smaller than minus two. But now, guys, we have no more solutions. So once we have added this constraint here, this formula has no more solutions. So this returns some sat. So you take the minimum value, you obtain it was minus two. And in fact, if you go back to the original problem, so remember that every line was selecting uh, the space on his right, 
you notice that the space of solution uh, is given by this line, by this combination of lines here, okay, uh, which is whose minimum is exactly this point here. Okay, so this is the way it works with the linear real arithmetic. Then, since there are plenty many extensions that have been co conceived. Well, uh, first of all, theory. This is you have for free the theory combination of uh, arithmetic with uh, other theories because this is so. The, in the theory combination, the reasoning is performed separately by the two theory solvers. So you find the minimum. The theory solver on linear real arithmetic finds the minimum. Okay, so this is you have theory combination for free from uh, the theory combination. We have found extension to integer by using uh, an integer optimization. We have found uh, uh, extensions to bit vectors. We have uh, found extensions to uh, floating point arithmetic. We are working on finding extension nonlinear arithmetic. We have found uh, particular subcases for uh, um, for uh, pseudo Boolean cost functions, which means that are some weighted sums of uh, zero one values. And we have also find a combination of objectives, like not only single objectives. So for instance, we have found uh, a key algorithm ad hoc whether the cost function is given by the sum of uh, weighted uh, Boolean atoms, so a condition like uh, if this atom is true, form is true, then the cost is this, otherwise this. And this was done by simply conceiving an ad hoc theory solver for uh, this kind of course in this form. Well, I, I'm unfortunately I don't have much time here. I just give you the flavor of that. If your cost function is something in this form, okay, if then else, uh, you can conceive an ad hoc theory solver that such that for every such constraints, keep um, keep uh, uh, the current bound of those costs and the current lower and upper bound. And every time you assign one of those variables to true, you increment the current value and check whether this is greater than the the, uh, the current bound. Otherwise, and uh, if uh, you assign to false, you check whether the remaining values, if assigned, if you assign the first remaining value, you to with the remaining value, you will be able to get something bigger than the lower bound. And if not, you fail. So this is very cheap theory, um, theory solver, which allows you to propagate uh, values. Something again, uh, uh, sorry, I'm going very fast, but, uh, uh, of course, I have only 10 minutes left. Well, you can run many different problems which share the same formula with different cost functions. So this is a trick. Uh, um, uh, very often you have uh, to minimize, you have, you have the same formula with very many different independent cost functions to handle. And you have to find a minimum for every such cost function. Well, of course, you can run uh, k distinct uh, OMT problems on that. That's it. But you can also factorize uh, the search. And this is done by simply every time you have attaining one theory consistent with assignment, what you can do is to, for every cost function, you find the minimum cost for every cost function. And then you, at the end of the day, you add the, the, a clause which is the disjunction of cost i is more than mean i. Okay, not that they, they, when we have only one cost, this reduces to the previous case. So this tells you, this guarantees you that every step, every new total, on every new truth assignment that you add improves at least one cost, but possibly more than one. Okay, so this. This means in this way, the search proceeds in parallel. So you may update more than one cost at, at the time. So this is the, the flavor of uh, the idea. I just want to give the flavors of uh, our ideas here. Then 
everybody who may be interested, they can point to some references. Okay, you can also have a lexicographic combination. So you know what, what the lexicographic combination is, right? So when you have more than multiple, you have more than one object that you want to uh, uh, satisfy, and you say, and you give a, a list, a priority list order to the objectives. You say, find the minimum, the, the solution, which minimizes uh, um, objective cost to one. And uh, if there are more than one such solution, find uh, the one which also minimizes the cost two. And if there are more such solution, more than one such solution, find the one which minimizes cost three. It's like, uh, you know, Excel, right? Impose an ordering on solution like in Excel where you, you order some uh, uh, line, the lines according to criterion number one and then uh, you subord at uh, criterion number two and then you subord at criterion number three. Okay, so this is minimizing the suborder on respect to cost one and uh, in subord at cost two and in subord at cost three and so on and so forth. How do we obtain this? Very easily. We obtain this very easily. We obtain this by doing the following. Um, every we just try to minimize according to cost number one. So at the end, we get a solution for cost one, which is equal to with uh, some minimum, okay? And then we have a formula which is inconsistent. So remember that the last formula which you find inconsistent is contains the clause uh, cost one still is more than mean one, with the current minimum that we have, right? Okay, what can we do now is simply we substitute cost one still is more than mean one with cost one equal mean one. And then we run a minimization for cost two. And so on. So we say, okay, given the fact that we want cost one to be mean one, let's see if we have a solution which is, what is the best solution by which we can minimize cost two? Okay. And we, and it will, we go ahead in this direction until we find an unsat or we have a satisfied the final minimum for all cost uh, functions okay uh, okay um notice that we can encode uh, so th there is a some kinds of sub cases which can be encoded in the um team so for instance when we have uh, pseudo, uh, the cost function which are pseudo boolean so when we have uh, the, the cost function, which is a weighted sum of uh, some uh, Boolean atom, okay? Notice that this is equivalent to say, sum of if then else, A1 uh, is W1, otherwise is zero, okay? So you have the sum of uh, these terms where A1, AJ is a Boolean atom, which is interpreted as one zero, and the J is some uh, positive weight, what we can do is uh, uh, we can uh, minimize, we can translate the problem of, uh, to the OMT problem of minimizing a sum, a sum of uh, J given variables, where by J are uh, real variables, adding the sum, of course, XJ must be fresh, must be new variables, adding some constraints in the form if AI is true, then Xi equal Wy, Wj, Xj equal Wj. Otherwise, if Aj is false, then uh, Xj equals zero. Okay? So we can encode this particular subproblem into a standard uh, maximization problem, into a minimization problem. Notice that we, we also add those constraints here. So we explicitly say that xj is in between zero and wj for the following reasons. So if uh, we are able to exceed the, bound, the current bound, if the current assigned uh, uh, wj's exceed the current bound, okay, we want to know that, okay? So we want to know that no matter what, the, the remaining XJs are strictly greater than zero. 
okay? So that as soon as uh, assigning few AJs, you have already exceeded the bound, then this constraint here allow you to conclude that you have exceeded the bound, so you have to backtrack. So you know that you have no more chance to go ahead and you can backtrack, okay? So these two constraints here, although they look uh, obvious, they allow you to backtrack much earlier when uh, as soon as a few, uh, you have assigned only a sub part of the OJ, but this is enough to conclude that you have exceeded the current bound. Okay, notice that we can uh, also encode uh, max SMT. Max SMT, if you remember, max SAT is a problem in which you have a fixed uh, SMT formula and a conjunction of uh, other SMT formulas, and you want to find the, the best, the model which uh, 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 assume that every uh, psi j has a cost, uh, as a penalty if it's violated, and you want to minimize the, uh, the number of violated size. So what you do is again, you, you add some fresh variable, uh, real variable xj and some fresh Boolean variables, and you, you encode the problem as a phi h and uh, ij or psi j and uh, not aj, so aj implies that xj equal wj, and ij uh, false implies that xj equals zero. Okay, so you are minimizing xj, okay? Notice that uh, if, uh, um, if uh, you, you set uh, phi j to false, okay? If you set phi j to false, then ij is forced to be true. Okay, but if ij is forced to be true, then xj is forced to be wj, so you pay a penalty. You pay a penalty which incurs in your actual cost. Okay, so you are able to encode the max SMT into our OMT, the optimization model theories, in this way. Okay, is this last fact clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is an explanation. I just said why we added those those constraints here. Okay. Uh, okay. You can also encode uh, some other. Sorry, there is a printer here who is uh, making some noise. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, if you you can also encode the, some max mean problems. So. If you have a combination of cost, uh, say cost one, cost K, and you want to find a solution which minimizes the maximum value among, the, among those costs, okay, this is called the min max problem. Then what you can do is simply uh, add the constraints uh, uh, that all cost I, you, you add a new fresh variable, which is cost, okay? And, uh, um, and you are the constraint that each core is the single cost must be smaller or equal than cost. And then you try to, and then you minimize cost. So this means that you are minimizing the maximum value between, so among, sorry, the cost i's here. Okay. So well, sometimes you have to minimize the maximum about some costs. Okay. So this is called the uh, infinite norm in, uh, in mathematics, right? You have to maximize, minimize the infinite norm of uh, some set, some uh, on array of, of, of uh, variables, okay? Or uh, array of terms, okay? So this is done for free. So you don't need to, to add some uh, complicated disjunction, say, ah, you have done this, or you have to minimize this or wrong. You just add a, a fresh new, uh, cost function, and uh, you impose that this cost function is greater than equal than all the, the cost, and then you minimize it. So automatically, you'll find the solution which minimizes the maximum amount of cost types. 
All right, guys, is this clear? And you okay, and of course you can combine uh, with with the weight as arbitrarily cost as the way you do. So why is this uh, step here non-obvious? Okay, so you may say this is absolutely obvious. Yes, but notice that those costs here can be costs of very different nature. So they can be uh, sums of uh, penalties in maxat. They can be uh, cost uh, min, min max cost and whatever. So you have an arbitrary ways of combining cost in different ways, uh, less ecographic, uh, boxed, uh, um, linear combination of them, uh, max SMT and uh, pseudo Boolean cost, uh, whatever you like. Okay, guys, I think uh, also Another fact that we substantially inherit the incremental, you can also do a meta incrementally by substantially inheriting with some very simple tricks, uh, the uh, incremental interface uh, of, uh, of uh, SMT. This is in some way some uh, of interest in many. Right? And we can also do some computation of Pareto fronts, but this is quite complicated to explain. Okay, just to conclude, uh, SMT overall is very popular. Uh, there's many, many applications. This is substantially the main uh, reasoning engine uh, in uh, software and hardware verification, and uh, is very much used also in many other in other AI domains uh, or non-AI domains. AI domains like planning, for instance, automatic reasoning. Um, other domains like uh, compiler optimization, for instance, uh, or uh, many allocation optimizations, uh, many others. And interesting is uh, SMT is very hybrid uh, technology. It's a hybrid in the sense that combines techniques from uh, uh, many different disciplines like uh, SAT, for instance, uh, from automatic theory pruning, uh, from operational research. So something which was definitely not conceived by logicians, was uh, conceived from people who had nothing to do with logic. Just remember that the simplex was conceived to find the optimal diets for cows, okay? Which sounds funny, right? But this is actually this. And these also have plenty many functionalities. And uh, well, there's a lot of do things to do. So whoever is interested in SMT and OMT is. So SMT is well established uh, technology. OMT is uh, in its birth. So it was started in uh, 2012, substantially. Um, and uh, uh, we have, uh, there's a lot of things to do. In particular, when you have to do with nonlinear arithmetic, we are very, still uh, very, beyond. Uh, we need uh, some theories, for instance, uh, uh, strings are a very interesting field, uh, in particular for security verification. There are new functionalities, uh, uh, interpolation, predicate abstraction, and uh, SMT optimization model theories. And also lots of interesting uh, combination with the SMT with the automatic theory proving to handle also quantifiers. Okay, guys, I think, uh, well, there are some survey papers I suggest you for SMT. One is my long survey paper uh, in uh, 2007. Of course, this is up to date, uh, updated only to 2007 technology, but uh, well, okay, this contains substantially all you know at this at the level of this course. Then there is the the SMT, the SMT chapter we wrote about the handbook of satisfiability. Um, then there is this survey also by Leonardo Moura and Nikolai Bjorner, and there are plenty of uh, web links of the interest. Again, we, I'm a very, and here are all the, all the uh, references that you may find in those slides, which of course is non-comprehensive. So, substantially that's all folks. 
that's all uh, for this course. Uh, I am very well aware that we have uh, only scratched the surface of many problems, okay? I, I only gave you uh, the flavor of where problems and solutions are, but this I think what uh, is of interest for a PhD student. So are you interested in, so SAT and uh, SMT is very, very wide umbrella terms, which have plenty, many applications, plenty, many of functionalities, and uh, some functionality may, may be of interest from some of you. So if you are interested in any of the topic that we have just uh, very quickly overlooked, uh, summarized, then uh, I'm very happy not only to give you pointers, but also to introduce you some uh, extra explanations. In particular, if, for, if anybody is interested in, in optimization model theories, I, uh, you can find on my web page uh, a, a tutorial, well, not on my web page, if you look to the EGKI 2098, Okay, so in 2018, sorry, what I was saying, uh, 2018 or 19, 19, sorry, there is, a, I gave a survey, um, a tutorial on optimization model theories is uh, uh, plenty many, is something like a six hours tutorial, something like that, where you can find uh, all you can need, uh, you, all you, you want to know about uh, OM status, uh, state of the art of optimization model theories, if you are interested in the topic, or just ask me and I, I will point and I give you personalized explanations. Okay, guys. So I just uh, need uh, uh, now, uh, the only thing needed is uh, uh, to set up the exam. I will uh, um, send an email to all of you to set up uh, a doodle, okay? Uh, and also, I will also email you a pointer to some one example of the, the exam from uh, two years ago, okay? So you can have a look uh, what we can expect uh, in, uh, from such an exam, okay? So if, do you have any general question about uh, the course or whatever? Uh, so one general question I had was that I already checked your page on optimization modular theory, but yeah. there is no video of the tutorial. It's Sorry, just a description, like uh, an introductory okay. description. There is uh, no video of the. Uh, because of this, uh, this is uh, okay. Uh, I forgot to add it to my page of optimization model theory. But if you look at the EGK nineteen tutorial, if you type, uh, if you Google, EGK. EJKI 2019, 2019 tutorial optimization model theories. You'll find a survey. Okay. And also, another tutorial I gave was on SMT workshop uh, in Lisbon. Uh, it was uh, well last summer, I think, or two summer, summers ago. If you type uh, uh, Roberto Sebastiani optimization model theories in Google. You yes. will find the slides uh, from uh, either SMT uh, workshop or uh, from uh, International Joint Conference on Artificial Intelligence in Macau. Okay. okay. And there are is there there is a, a lo very long collection of slides. I never took okay. the time of writing a survey. Well, one uh, something I had in mind is writing a survey on uh, optimization model theories. But it took me so long to write a survey on satisfiability model theories in 2007 uh, that uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm really scared of the, idea of, of the amount of work to do that because you, you are really, you may really not be aware of uh, how much it takes to, to write a survey paper, okay, a survey on, on some technology. So I think that I can point you to the slides, okay? Did you find them on Google? Yeah, I found the slides already. I thought there would be a way to find the video as well. Of no, unfortunately not. This okay, was not okay. I'm sorry, yeah. 
Okay, I'm thank you. Thank but you. if you look at the slide, is if you are interested and if there is something that you want to me know, just send me an email and I can have uh, we can have uh, a Zoom. Uh, I can give you a Zoom explanation of the part of interest for you. Okay, okay. thanks a lot. That would be very kind. But thank you. Okay, so okay. guys, any more questions? Request. Okay, so I think uh, we can uh, uh, close uh, this uh, this way. Uh, just let me stop uh, uh, sharing uh, and stop also stop recording.